Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Jim Hatchell coming back at you. It's a great Saturday afternoon. I've been out at the pool with my grandbabies and having a wonderful day and decided to come in and re-record the call from last week where we discussed the law of awareness. As most of you know, we've been struggling with our platform for these webinars, and uh, I decided that it was time to do something to help resolve the problem. And so now we're using uh, Zoom and we feel confident that Zoom is going to be a better product for us and it's going to serve us better and guaranteed that we can have at least a hundred people in the room. Anyway, so all of that's behind us. We, uh, we uh, decided to re-record because of all the confusion last week, the distractions with, uh, Dale being here in Columbia and me being in Charlotte, we just felt like we were not in sync with the slides. And so we decided to do this over and uh, I hope you get more out of it. There are a lot of positive things about Zoom that uh, I think will be beneficial to us as it relates to presenting the information to you so that you will have a better experience. And for me, that's the most important part is the experience that you have. So I'm going to uh, cut my, uh, video off now and we're going to go straight to the slides let's see if i can make this magically disappear and i did you should see just a little something up in the corner up there uh, we'll leave that there in case i need to go back on with the video so as we said you know just want to welcome to welcome you to the call my name is jim hatchell i'm part of the hatchell burt uh, team, uh, my wife Dale and uh, our daughter Elizabeth are partners in the Hatchelbert team, and they've uh, asked me to uh, provide some information to help the team grow. And we've offered that to many communities, and we uh, want to see everybody be successful in their Shackley business. And of course, we decided to start this a couple of weeks ago after we left conference and that uh, was a good time to to look at growth and remembering that the conference theme was why not you and why not now it's interesting that i just heard that same phrase again from one of my early mentors and you've heard me talk about jim Rohn, and he said the same words why not you and why not now so I think that's so important as it relates to our Shackley businesses and where we want to go in the future. I believe that personal growth is important to growing our own businesses. And so as we grow, it helps us grow those around us and those on our team. I heard a quote recently that says, you cannot teach what you do not know and you cannot share what you do not have. And so awareness is one of those things that helps us learn and know what those, what the answers to those questions are. So the two books we're going to be sharing, of course, to jumpstart your growth and the John Maxwell 15 invaluable laws of growth. So who am I? I think you know who I am. Uh, I'm a certified John Maxwell coach. I uh, do coaching and training and speaking. It's what my vocation is. I'm a member of Toastmasters. Uh, I participate in an organization of networkers called Business Network International. I uh, formerly served as a Stephen minister in my church where I helped primarily work with young people that were in a uh, children's home and was a great experience for me really taught me to be a better listener and to understand and try to hear what people were sharing i'm a former recruiter in the air national guard and air force and uh, spent many years uh, recruiting young men and women into the military, which was not always an easy task, but one that I learned a great deal from and one that I like to share experiences. Uh, I've ended my career as the chief of recruiting operations for the Air National Guard, and Dale and I lived in 
Washington, D.C. for eight years, and uh, it was a great experience for us, and we've, uh, we moved back to South Carolina in 2006. I was a former human resources director with an agency here in the state of South Carolina, and today uh, I do coaching and training, and I'm a partner with my wife and daughter, and we're Shackley Key Coordinators of the Hatchelbert team. So that's who I am. So my goals for this process for this study is to help you realize your potential because potential is something that we all have. We don't always know what it is and certainly none of us ever reach our maximum potential. But if we can define where we are and where we want to go, we can put that potential to work to help us move along that journey. I want you to believe in you. As we said in the very beginning, why not you, why not now? You've got to believe in yourself if you're going to follow that process. I want you to increase your level of success, and that's totally up to you because I don't know what you dream about. I don't know what you see as your level of success, but whatever that is, I want to be here to help you in that journey. I want you to become intentional in your life and, and in your business. And if you're intentional in your life, chances are you're going to be intentional in your business. So today we're going to be talking about the law of awareness. And of course, the law of awareness is the most important law of the entire universe. Awareness is the only thing that helps you, helps me, helps all of us to become aware of whatever it is that we want to be, to where we want to go. We have to be aware. There's a great quote, and I can't remember who said it, but it's this goes like this. It says, the key to growth is the introduction of a higher dimension of consciousness into our own awareness. You must know yourself to grow yourself. James Russell Lowell is quoted as saying that no one, no one can produce great things who is not thoroughly sincere in dealing with him or herself. If we don't know who we are and if we don't know where we're going, then it's going to be really, really hard for us to grow into the potential that is within us. So today we're going to share some information with you, and I hope you have your handout that you can follow along on because I'm going to be sticking pretty close to exactly what's on each one of those handouts. And that's a great way to reflect on what we've talked about today because while learning is important, the best learning is learning that you have reflected on because when you reflect, you learn more and gain more from what you've heard. So let's begin that journey as we look at the law of awareness. So who are you? Who are you? Do you know that answer, the answer to that question? Well, I know it's difficult. But sometimes it requires us to go inside and look at ourselves to see where we are, you know, and to grow ourselves, we must know ourselves. Because, so we have to become aware. So let's think about what some of the things that we need to do as it relates to growing ourselves and what we can do to help us grow ourselves. Well, one of the first things we have to do is we have to know what our strengths are. You know, Dale and I, um, some years ago, uh, did a um, study that was uh, on, from Marcus Buckingham, and it was called the um, 
the trumpet, the trumpet, oh, I cannot remember the name of it. Uh, but the story goes, it's not about working on our weaknesses, which is the next point, but focusing on our strengths. And it's most important that we understand what our strengths are. Of course, we do need to be aware of our weaknesses, but we don't need to focus on them. We need to focus on our strengths. Our strengths, you know, those things that make you feel positive, that give you energy, that bring the best out of you. Those are your strengths. That's what you want to focus on. But your weaknesses are those things that hold you back, that frustrate you, that you don't get energy from. You don't need to focus on those. Often we think about, oh, we've got to improve in this area. We got to improve in that area. Well, yeah, you may have to, but let's focus on what we do well and let's take advantage of that so that we can move forward. The next point I want to share is understanding and knowing what your interests are. So what is it that you're interested in? I think this sort of goes hand in hand with knowing your strengths. And then the next point, which is you have to know what your opportunities are. Well, the opportunity for us lies right in front of us. We have a great business, Shackley Corporation, and all that they do for us. We have that opportunity. And we take our strengths and we use our strengths to catapult that opportunity into the next level so that we can grow and be better at what we do. So discovering our strengths is so important. And if you wanted to do that in a very interesting way, there's a book called Strength Finders by Tom Rath. It's called Strength Finders 2.0. You can buy the book, and if you get the book, you get a little inventory that you can take, and it identifies areas that you are strongest in. Some of you may have taken other inventories like DISC and uh, Myers-Briggs and things like that. They all tell you something about your personality, but they also tell you something about your strength. So it's so important that we understand to grow ourselves, we must know these four things because they help us tell us where we are today. Where you are and where you want to be. So as we move forward, I want to share about the three different kinds of people that we often hear about. And I want to talk about that in a very different way uh, because I like the way John talks about him, and I think it's kind of humorous in the way he does that. But before we go there, I just want to share something that is not on the slides, and I think that it's important um, as it relates to going back and helping us identify our, and become aware. Because one of the things we have to be aware of is not just those strengths, weaknesses, interest, and opportunity. But we have to be aware of what our passion and purpose is also. And there are three questions that I think you can ask yourself that will help you define your passion and your purpose. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some questions later on that I want you to think about also. But these three questions right here, I think, help us look at our passion and purpose and can help us identify what it truly is. So the first question I want to ask you is, what makes you laugh? And then the second question I want to ask you is, what makes you sing? And then the third question I want you to reflect on is what makes you cry? If you can answer those questions and you are well on your way of defining your passion and your purpose and you can take your strengths and you can tie all that together. And I promise you it was the results will be something that is amazing. And you can grow your Shackley business or you can grow yourself to levels that are unbelievable. 
psychologist Nathaniel Brandon says it this way. He says the first step towards change is awareness. And the second step is acceptance. So as we grow and we have to make those changes in our actions and the things that we do, remember, it's about awareness. The three kinds of people that I want to share with you now as we move forward, those are the people who don't know what they would like to do. Or in my language, they're them people that don't know what they'd like to do. You know, and what John calls those people are, they are confused. And I'll tell you that I have run into a lot of confused people in my day. Don't be confused. Become aware of who you are. Become aware where you want to go. Become aware of your passion and purpose and move forward in your future. The next kind of person that he talks about is people who know what they want, but don't do it. They are frustrated. I've lived in this area a lot of times in my life because I have known what I wanted and I've known what I needed to do. But for whatever reason, there's that terror barrier that stands between me and doing it. I get in that comfort zone and I want to sit there. Listen, you and I all know that it's fun in the comfort zone but abundant zone is where we want to be. We want to be out of the comfort zone and we want to do the things that cause us to get out of the comfort zone. And that fear, overcoming that fear is one of the things that we can do. But if you know your passion, if you are aware, then it becomes easier for you to get beyond those obstacles, those challenges to get out of the comfort zone. The third kind of people finding direction are the people who know what they want and they do it. And you know what we call those people? They are fulfilled. And that's what we want to be. We want to be fulfilled. Abraham Maslow talks about self-actualization. These are the people who have reached the top of that pyramid. They are the ones who know what it's like to fulfill their purpose, to fulfill their passion, to be aware of where they are and to be aware of where they want to go. Awareness. It is the absolute most important thing that I've shared today is that it's about being aware. Are you aware of where you want to be? I love this quote from Dr. Schuler. He says, if you knew you could not fail, what would you do? Gosh, what a question. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? Would you take that health print and go walking down the street and say, hey, listen, I've got a great tool here. I just want to share it with you. Would you go set up a display in a mall and have a banner that says free health print, health assessment, free? Would you do that if you knew you couldn't fail? I'll tell you what, folks. That health print is a almost a non-fail opportunity. I challenge you. I challenge you to step up your game using the health print. I hope you're following all the information that corporate office is sharing with us about the health print and how we can better use it. I hope you're following the things that are posted on Facebook and other places that share, that shows how we can use this product to be successful. It is so amazing. Again, finding your passion and purpose. 
Are you doing what you like doing? If a person says out to run a mile and three quarters of the mile ahead, there's a cliff. Should that person try to finish running the mile or just because they started out to do so? Well, I like running, but I don't want to run off any cliffs. So do you like what you're doing? And I can tell you a hundred stories about friends and people, and including myself, who worked in jobs and did things for years that they didn't necessarily like doing, but they did them anyway. If you don't like it, don't do it. Change direction. It's a risk, of course. But what if you don't change? What if you continue down that road? What if this runner didn't stop at the edge of the cliff? What risk, which risk would you rather live with? What would you like to do? Pretty simple here. I know what I'd like to do, but guess what? I'm never going to be on the PGA tour. I'm not even going to make it to the senior tour. Heck, I have a hard time playing with my buddies down the street, but I know what I'd like to do. So what do you like to do? Check your heart. What's your passion? Burnout is not doing too much of something. I've been there. I have just absolutely been there. And I know you have too. But doing something wrong too many times, doing something that you're not passionate about too many times, is going to result in burning out. Find that passion. Find that purpose. Be aware of what it is that you can do that doesn't cause you to burn out. The next thing is, can you do what you want to do? I believe that if Shackley is what you want to do, then there's no question in my mind you can do it. I know you've heard the statement. You can do this business wrong long enough and still be successful. Well, today we have tools that you almost can't do it wrong. Well, I have to tell you a story. There is a way to do it wrong because I am one of the ones who did it wrong while at conference. Yes, I did it wrong. When they first announced, announced the health print, I got really excited. I'm a pretty competitive kind of guy. I got really excited and I started sharing the health print with friends and I sent out 25 texts to friends and the message read something like this. It says, hey, this is a 20 question health assessment. I've been challenged to do 100 in the next 100 days. Help me beat my wife and daughter. Now, that was probably not the right way to reach out with the health print on the first time. But there's one thing I can tell you is that I learned very quickly by listening that that was the wrong approach. But I did follow up with those folks. And while I got some really strange answers from them, they did at least talk to me. Don't do it that way. Do it the right way. Permission marketing, that's what it's about. But to do what you want to do, you must have a dream, and it has to be specific. You have the unique talents and gifts to do whatever it is that you can dream. What drives you? Your values and priorities? Do you have the right motives? The next one is how do you, <laughs> I'm chuckling because the slides are moving and sometimes they move without 
being in the right place at the right time. So the next one is how to do what you want to do. And it starts with, of course, awareness. Becoming very conscious of every choice you make. Becoming so aware that you almost instinctively, intuitively know what to do. Then the next one is to act. The major difference between those who do it and those who don't do it is those who do it, do it. That's very simple. The next thing is accountability. We have heard about accountability our entire lives. And you know those who are never held accountable. I got a sibling like that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But accountability is so important. One of the things that we do on our team is we have support circles. And those support circles are also, we rename them support circles rather than call them accountability circles because it sounds better. But they are accountability circles. And accountability you know, it can be shared accountability with friends or coach or personal accountability by writing things down and tracking your progress. You can do it for yourself. Your calendar can be your accountability partner. What's the saying, you know, one week with uh, seven days without an appointment makes one week. You get that? I hope so. Attractions. Who are the people you are attracting? Are they like-minded in success? You know, one of the things I love about going to Shackley Conference is that you're surrounded by 5,000 positive people. And it's hard to get five positive people in my community at, at, together at one time. The only way I know I'm having positive people together is I'm having a Shackley meeting at my house. Who are you attracting? And I can promise you that your awareness of you, that your passion and your purpose attract the people that you want around you. And now the B, be committed. Be consistent. Be purposeful. Be reflective. And most of all, be grateful. Always show appreciation for what you are learning from others. So you may be asking, should, should you do what you would like to do? Let's talk about that for a minute. You know, you may want to find a coach or a mentor. I think one of the greatest things that I've ever done is that I have a, a mentor and that I have a coach. But if you want to do that, then you need to ask some questions or you have to ask yourself some questions about that relationship. And the question might be, do I have a teachable spirit? When I'm visiting with my mentor or my coach or my accountability partners, am I always prepared? Am I prepared to ask good questions about how I can move from where I am to where I want to be? Can I demonstrate the learning that I've gained from them.
Am I being accountable? That's if you find someone who is mentoring you, someone who is on your accountability team, you know, building a good relationship with those folks and using these five bullets to help you. But if you're mentoring, if you are the team leader, you should focus your teaching on some of these areas. What are the strengths of your mentee? What is their temperament? What is their track record? What is their passion? Do they have choices? Can you provide them advice? Do you have the support and resources that you can provide them? Can you provide them feedback and encouragement? There's some things I want to share with you in the mentoring relationship that's important as we are part of that accountability that you can help your teams with as it relates to being the mentor or the coach or the accountability partner. As you see there, the coaching mentoring re relationship, you may want to ask some questions like, here's what I ask you. And here's what I heard you say. Now, can I ask you more questions? The goal, of course, is to help and lift them to the next level. The goal is to find a mentoring relationship that is mutually beneficial. beneficial. So as the coach or the mentor, will you ask the questions? What will it cost to change? The hint is, is it will cost everything. So when can you start? What will it look like when you get there? the two most important questions that you need to ask are the two most important days of your life is the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. Now I said I wanted to share some questions with you that are not in the slides. I'm going to flip back to those right now because I think they're so important as it relates to becoming aware and becoming knowing your passion and knowing your purpose. So I want to ask these questions as I journey down that part of my road to discovery. What makes a day complete for you? So what makes a day complete for you? These are great questions to ask your team members as you're mentoring them and helping them grow as well. So what do you need to hear to feel so that you can function fully? You know, a lot of that has to do with personality types. If you're a high D or a high I or C or S, they're all going to be different. 
my beautiful wife is a high eye. She likes to party. So we have to have a lot of positive, good things going on around the house. You know, I don't play loud music and have dances all the time, but we do think about the things that make us feel complete and high energy and fun are some of the things that make her feel complete in the day. What drives the compulsions that make you take the next step? What drivers or compulsions do you have that help you choose from right from wrong? What is it that revs your motor up? What gets you going? What are your obsessions? What are your questions? What are your yearnings? What are your dreams? And what are your secret prayers? If you can answer those questions, I promise you that you, you are on your way discovering to discovering your passion, your purpose, and your potential, and you will become more aware about you and about those around you than you've ever been before. Well, I hope this teaching has been beneficial for you. Uh, it is so much information here that I could teach another 45 minutes and dive much deeper into it. But if you're reading the book or if you're following along in the journaling with the uh, Jumpstart Your Growth, I am sure that you are learning some of this information, and I hope that it's beneficial to you. If you have questions, you know how to reach me via email. Uh, I look forward to talking with you again on Monday. We will be looking at the law of the mirror, another one of those interesting laws about personal growth and personal de development. I hope you have a